noticed how dusty his purse is at. He's worried about the dust on his guitar. That's what's going to happen one of these days. That was even the unsaved would say this morning that was about stupid. It's time for an invitation. We're counting on the invitation. Purposed in our heart, we're probably going to say no again. But man, does he not care? When the door of mercy is shut, the Spirit of God is gone. The call no longer goes out. Folks is going to run to and fro. As Ronnie was teaching this morning, it reminded me. And I'm going to take my time. Hopefully in about five minutes I'll be finished. But in the last two or three years, I preached a message. And I want you to listen closely. Come on, Richard. Preach this message a couple of times. We're living in a time that it's not important. It's not important to serve the Lord. It's not important for folks to be faithful to God and faithful to the church. We're living in a time that our government that once taught people the first thing we need to do is trust God and lean to God for our understanding and our leadership. Now they're weeding it out and say it's not important. I took their numbers. I had Jenna to get on the computer and some has heard this a couple of times. Some needs to hear it this morning. I usually don't preach as long on Sunday morning as I do Sunday night. A lot of times I do most of my preaching at funerals because that's the only time you get folks in church. Come on. Last week, last Saturday, a week ago yesterday, there was probably 20 to 30 hands raised for prayer. I called my mom and most is, is from my, my family and, 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 and attended my mom's church. I called my mom this week. I said, how many of them was in church? She said, none of them. At the time, their hearts is touched and their hearts is pricked. But as Ronnie taught the children of Israel, just like it then, we're the same way. Yes. It don't take but mere moments, Toby, for our heart to be changed and our point of direction that we focused in our mind to make a change in our life, we've lost that insight. Right. But I took the numbers from the government, and the government teaches that it's not important. Not important. And I would use Brittany because she's my friend this morning. Brittany's getting ready to have a baby at the end of the month, and she's already, I'm sure she's got baby clothes, and she's making preparations. But I tell you what, if there's anything our children need more than anything is direction. Direction starts with examples that are set. But I took the government's numbers. I took their numbers. We'll invite folks to church. And they say it's even grown since I've done this in 2010. That's how long ago it's been, over three years ago, since I got their, their numbers. But they say it's grown. In 2010, they say 80%. They said in 2010 that 80% of Americans no longer attend church. 80%. And most likely, Lee, by using their numbers, 80%. And I know that in 2010 there was some of those 80% that were not able to come to church due to sicknesses or ailments. Yeah. But for the most part, wouldn't you say if folks didn't attend church, most likely they're not saved, right? right? I believe with all of my heart contrary to what anybody says, if we love Jesus and love Him, we'll forsake not the assembling of ourselves together in the house of God. Amen. Come on. My favorite thing is hamburgers. I go to a hamburger joint, not a spaghetti house. Come on. You're right. 
I use these numbers right quick before I give an invitation. God is still long suffering as Ronnie taught us. The door of mercy is still open. They said in, in 2010 that 616,067 people, over 600,000 people in 2010 died of heart attacks. Over 600,000 here in the United States. 80% of two of 616,000 is 492,853. Toby. No wonder the Word of God said that hell is as large in its borders daily. No wonder the Word of God said the end time can't come unless there come a great power in the way. Going down and leaving all of these top ten. Cancer was second, 562,000. 80% of that is 450,000. But the number of deaths in, in 2010 was 2,423,700. 2 412. A lot of deaths, a lot of funerals. 80% of that was 1,938,969. 938,969. Almost, almost 2 million people was unchurched. That's their numbers. That's not my numbers. That's what they proclaimed. Right. Come on. The door of mercy is going to be shut, lady. Amen. Time is going to be no more. I want to see him, don't you? Yes. I want to know him in his fullness and his realness. As our sister said this morning, Brother Ricky said, I want to serve him. I don't want him. He'll serve me. He has served me ever since I've been walking with him. Serving me as in taking care of me. Supplying my needs. But don't you think it's time that we serve Him and do what work that He needs done this morning? If you're here and you're lost, I'm glad I'm around a bunch of people that's concerned about the lost. So many times, and God have mercy if, if we think that if, if, that we make the unsaved think that we're picking on them. Boys, I want to be compassionate. I want to be long long suffering yes. as he was yes. I want him to know that my number one goal was not wiping the dust off of the guitar but giving an invitation that somebody might be getting their last call Amen. if you're here this morning you don't know the Lord the best time is now yes yes they ain't going to be the perfect church service most likely when the Lord speaks to you and I could get an amen out of a whole bunch of unsaved people or saved people this morning. Most likely the person that you want there at church when you get saved is not there. And most likely the person that you don't want there when you get saved, most likely they'll be at church. Most likely you didn't get to hear your favorite song. But later the Lord speaks to us. Yes, he does. And we know without a shadow of a yes. doubt that it's His voice. Yes. Heavenly Father, we come before You today. You've given us a wonderful service. You've given us a, wonder, a wonderful opportunity, Lord, to praise You and to lift You up. We would like to, after the first 20 minutes of this service, say, man, we had a good time. We've heard your word. We've sang your praises. We've heard wonderful testimonies. But now, Lord, that we're at the closing of the service. Folks are sitting in this building this morning and made choices and made decisions. But we're giving folks one more chance and one more opportunity. And I ask, Lord, that 
as we would sing this last verse and chorus of song. <coughs> Give somebody, Lord, the courage, whether it's at this altar or where they sit or where they stand. Say, Lord, I choose to serve you. Thank you for being long suffering with me. Thank you, Lord, for looking over my sin and my fault, showing me love and compassion. I believe in my heart that you died for me. I believe in my heart that you rose again victorious over death, hell, and the grave the third day. But most importantly, Lord, I'm getting ready to confess you as my Lord and Savior, as my Redeemer and my only hope. Move as only you can as the church would stand. And we sing this verse and chorus of this song. Years I spent in vanity and proud, caring not my Lord was crucified. believe it my way, but you got to believe what the Word of God says.